Dr. Gertrude Ellian describes scientific research as nothing more than organized play for adults. She should know. She and her team have made breakthroughs in biochemistry, pharmacology, immunology, and virology. And at 79, she thinks just like the students she loves to mentor. And I guess the most important advice I have to give is that they mustn't be easily discouraged. They mustn't let other people discourage them, and they mustn't get discouraged by themselves. Her credo comes not from the scientific community, but from Admiral Farragut. In fact, if I'm allowed to use a swear word, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. <laughs> For her, full speed is an understatement. This New York City native skipped four grades and graduated from high school at 15. Interestingly enough, her teachers thought she'd become a writer or an historian. Then came one key event. Cancer claimed her beloved grandfather's life and changed her own forever. He was a man I loved dearly because he had been a babysitter for me when I was young and, and we were very close. And my feeling was, what am I going to major in when I get to college? I liked all my subjects. I was one of these, I guess I was almost a sponge. I loved to learn. And I said, well, I guess the thing I have to do is go into science and make a new drug that's going to cure cancer. At first, she was denied access to the lab she loves, even with summa cum laude honors in chemistry from Hunter College. Her degree came in 1937, in the middle of the Depression. And what few jobs there were in science were going to men. One firm went so far as to tell her that she was so attractive that she would be a distraction in the lab. So she took a six-week secretarial course and supported herself with a series of jobs ranging from receptionist to substitute high school teacher. Then came the war, and more opportunities opened up for women. And of course, when the war was over, it was hard to get rid of us. Dr. Ellian found a home at Burroughs Welcome, now Glaxo Welcome. Her mentor there was George Hitchings, who spurned the normal trial and error approach in pharmaceutical research, instead trying to devise false building blocks of DNA to thwart the growth of cancer cells and viruses. This radical method, standard practice in labs today, led their team to the discovery of purenethal and thioguanine, two of the first successful drugs for treatment of acute leukemia in children. Their cancer research also produced Imuran, which has been very successful in preventing rejection in kidney transplants between unrelated donors, saving hundreds of thousands of lives in the last three decades. Luck plays a big part in everything you do. I think there were many times when um, somebody just happened to be there at the right time with the right suggestion, and that if you had an open mind and you were willing to follow it up, you suddenly discovered a whole new field, and that happened to us over and over again. After Hitching's retirement, Dr. Ellian's team developed a cyclovir for the treatment of herpes, the first viral chemotherapy that was not toxic to healthy cells, opening the door for the AIDS drug, AZT. Looking back, what is her proudest accomplishment? Well, that's a question that I'm asked very often, but I always say I don't discriminate amongst my children. And each of the drugs in its own day was a great achievement for me. Her career has brought a dazzling array of awards, 25 honorary degrees, induction into the National Inventors Hall of Fame, a National Medal of Science, admission into the Royal Society following in the footsteps of her hero, Louis Pasteur, and a Nobel Prize in Medicine. She is one of only 10 women to share that honor in the sciences. Yet all this recognition hasn't changed her basic goals. The same thing that inspired me over the years inspires me now. I want to get sick people well. I want to get children involved in science. I want them to have the same kind of, of excitement and, and fun that I've had and do something useful with their lives.